bounded by seas to the east, forests to the west, with cliffs behind and mountains skirting our north. We face the enemy. Advanced teams scout the valley. They don't stray too far from the security of the forests and coasts that bound our battlefield. Once they're established, tactical forces secure supply routes and establish influence in the most desirable territories. Small armies collide, and proud soldiers sacrifice themselves for greater good. Heroic or tragic, these small skirmishes serve only as precursors to later, larger battles. The deliberate advance to gain territory shifts our armies toward the valleys, into the central plain where solid walls are formed. Unfortunate prisoners are captured as the battle becomes decidedly territorial. Battalions hunker down in secure holdings, and definitive battle lines are drawn. Final strategic flurries mark the battle's apogee. Little more is left to be done now. Securing the last perceived weaknesses in our battle-torn lines marks the final stage of our struggle. And as straggling prisoners are caught, the fighting winds down. Finally, it is over. Dust settles on the great armies that have come to do battle. Prisoners are exchanged and territory is counted. And like in all the great battles that have come before and that will come again, the armies withdraw. All that is left is an empty valley surrounded on four sides by mountains, seas, and forests. Go is humanity's oldest surviving board game with origins in ancient China. No one knows for sure how Go came into being, who invented it, or why, although there are several theories. One attributes its invention to Emperor Yao, who in 2250 BC created it as a mental exercise for his shall we say, dim-witted son. Another conjecture is that a vassal of Emperor Qi invented Go as well as several card games for the Emperor's amusement nearly 4,000 years ago. And finally, a third theory suggests that during the Chao Dynasty, court astrologers and shaman created the Go board and pieces as an aid in mapping celestial movements and predicting human affairs. Any one of these theories could be true, but in any case, the game has remained essentially unchanged for well over 3,000 and possibly up to 4,000 years. The first historical mention of Go being played in Japan actually comes from ancient Chinese chronicles. They mention that Go was a major pastime of Japanese aristocrats in the early 7th century. But like the origins of Go, no one really knows how or when it came to Japan. Go could have been brought to Japan in the 6th century by Koreans fleeing political corruption in their own country. Or it may have been imported by a high-level commission sent by Japan to China early in the 7th century. The ambassador of that commission, an aristocrat named Kibi no Makibi, may have brought Go back to Japan after his 18 years of study abroad. In Japan, Go was played in fairly small circles by aristocrats, warlords, and Buddhist monks until the early 1600s. In 1603, the Shogun, or Supreme Warlord, 
appointed a Buddhist monk named Nikai to head a new government office devoted to the development and regulation of Go. Nikai agreed and took the name Honenbo Sansa as he accepted his new duties. In the next few years, Sansa established four houses or schools where students could devote their energies to the study and advancement of Go. These four houses, Oninbo, Hayashi, Yasui, and Inoue, remained in place until the middle of the 19th century. In fact, a hereditary line of preeminent players continued unbroken until 1940, when the 21st Honenbo died. This subsidized, government-regulated study of Go made Japan the world's intellectual leader of the game. But even this governmental promotion did not influence the widespread play of the game. It wasn't until the mid-20th century when Japanese newspapers began sponsoring Go tournaments worth substantial amounts of money that nearly everyone began to play. Recent history has demonstrated that both China and Korea are very strong Go countries, probably enriched by the success of the Japanese. In recent decades, Players from China and Korea studied under some of the finest Japanese masters. So at present, the top players in all three countries compete on a pretty even level. In the Western world, Go was recognized but not understood until about 1880, when a German named Otto Korselt wrote a book whose title translated to the Japanese-Chinese game Go. Currently, there are hundreds of Go clubs on every continent in the world. Go tournaments test the skill of players who try to increase their rank and status. Go books offer techniques and game diagrams played by distinguished masters. And computer programs offer challenging play for many people. Go is a game for all ages. Its basic rules allow anyone to play, yet it takes a lifetime to master.